Thank you, thank you. So when you graduate high school, you're expected to know what you want to study, you're expected to graduate in four years, and you're expected to find a job and then start paying student loans if you have any. Well, I didn't decide to do that. Not because I wanted to, but life had a different road for me. So when I graduated high school in 2015 in my home island of San Juan, Puerto Rico, I wanted to study international business at the time. And I wanted to study in, in the US. So I applied to some United States uh, universities. And I started wanting to study in one specific. And so I applied to them. And I applied to some savings haven schools back in Puerto Rico. And I didn't get, to I didn't get accepted into any of the universities in the US. Not because of my merits, not because of my grades, not because of my SAT scores, but because my college advisor sent his papers past the due date they were accepting freshmen. Bummer, right? <laughs> so to no avail, I decided to go to, to back home, to stay in Puerto Rico and study in the University of Puerto Rico, Rio Piedras campus, which don't get me wrong, it's a phenomenal university. It's one of the best in Latin America and in the Caribbean, but it didn't have an international business major. So I went undeclared and I tried a bit of marketing here, tried a bit of HR, didn't really have a path, didn't really have a plan, didn't really know what I wanted to do with myself. So the thing is that while I was choosing what I wanted to do with myself, 2016 came with a bit of a surprise. In 2016, Puerto Rico declared it had a, a financial disaster. It owes, it's now in debt of $72 billion to US bondholders. This debt has accumulated throughout the years because of bad government spending and local corruption. So since we're a US colony, we're up to, up to Congress to, to decide. They passed what is called the PROMESA Act. The PROMESA Act basically established, it says that it's gonna put a fiscal control group, kind of like a board of trustees, uh, an executive committee, to oversee Puerto Rico's finances and budgeting. So the thing is that these people came to manage the funds of Puerto Rico, and they didn't come here to create jobs, they didn't come here to create welfare and good stuff to Puerto Rican people, but to pay back the bondholders at whatever price. So since then, They've closed over 500 schools in Puerto Rico. Some hospitals and retirement funds are basically inexistent now and people have to work till they give out. And this is how it affected me. So in the public university where I was in, they wanted to close three out of 10 of the public universities and make a budget cut of over $500 million. Students revolted, students were mad because since it made a cut on, the, on, the, on there, they wanted to raise tuitions of, to students up to 50%. Could you imagine what students are paying ra right now in Bryant and in the US, raise it 50%? Wouldn't be happy, huh? <laughs> so the thing is that students came together, they revolted, and they decided to go on strike. They barbed wired the university, closed down the university, and went on strike, vandalized it even. But it lasted way longer than it should have. It lasted five months. Five months where the university was closed down, blood on the streets, fighting, violence, tear gases, complete and utter destruction. And here I was, I didn't know what I wanted to study. So I felt like my island was just being destroyed. I didn't know what I wanted to do with myself and I felt like I had no vision, no path. I felt like I was doing nothing with my life. I felt like I was lost. And the thing is that since Puerto Rico is facing so much, so much, uh, things happening, and plus me not knowing what I wanted to study, I decided what was best decision. I dropped out of school. College wasn't for me. What is going on in my island? So I dropped out of school. And then I did something different. I enrolled myself into a volunteer program called ISIC. ISIC in ISIC, once I got accepted, I went to travel to, to Medellin, Colombia, to six weeks to teach English to 12 beautiful boys and girls. It was one of the best experiences I've ever had in my life. And the thing is, so I teamed up with the local community of Moravia, Universidad Pontifacia Bolivariana, and over 40 different students from all sorts of the world to be able to teach the community in things such as agronomy, English, arts, and culture. I remember I used to work in the week, and then in the weekends I'd be able to have the opportunity to be able to travel around and see and learn from the culture. These are pictures that I took never before seen, bef seen, seen to the public, completely private of mine, first time I ever shared it here in the, in the, TED, the TED stage. And I remember I was in, in 
um, in the weekends, I'd be able to travel and learn about the culture. And I went to Parque Tairona. Parque Tairona is a 90 square mile jungle. And it was a three to five day hike. And I didn't have much, much money at the time. So I went backpacking. I lived off of my backpack. That backpack had two pounds of bread, one ham and cheese, and then two avocados. And I lived with that for three days for two people, three people. I came to Colombia at 150 pounds. I came back home at 125. The happiest I've ever been though. Complete and utter joy after being able to experience such a beautiful thing like this. I felt like nothing could destroy me. I felt like everything was behind me now and I was gonna start fresh. The university started again. Tuition did raise 50%. But I was just so happy after such an experience like this. I felt like nothing could go wrong. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? <laughs> September 20th, 2017, a day that will live in infamy to whatever Puerto Rican that you know of. Category five hurricane, Hurricane Maria. Over 150 mile per hour speeds straight, passed straight through my island for 18 hours straight. I remember I was in my grandmother's house when this happened. Her walls caved in, letting in all the storm, train, havoc, everything, all the destruction just come into to, to the, to the home. CNN posted a result that it would cost around $90 billion to get the island back up and running again, plus the 72 that we already owe the U.S. bondholders. Hmm. It was complete and utter destruction to my island. I had so many friends that lost everything that they've ever owned, everything. Could you imagine? Think of this for a second. Everything that you own right now, your car, the stove that you cook on, the roof over your head, gone in a matter of a day. So, and I, was, I lived in the capital. I lived in, San, in, the, in the capital of San Juan and I lived six months without electricity. And I was one of the lucky ones. I lived with a generator, but to get gas on that generator, and you needed to go to the gas station where since there was so much scarcity, it would take two to seven hours just to get gas, where here it would take minutes, maybe even the whole day to get gasoline. Water? I had no running water for three months. I used to shower with rainwater, collection of rainwater, and sometimes even a gallon of water, which I wasn't gonna drink because I wanted to shower. And what happened to my university? It got closed down again, obviously. And I still didn't know what I wanted to study, so here we find ourselves again. <laughs> no vision, no path. I was going nowhere with my life. This is where I hit my lowest, anger, anxiety, depression, all these feelings for half a year of my life. And I just needed to make something different out of my life. So I had a girlfriend at the time and she was the one that made up with the idea saying like, hey, we already applied to the US uh, when we were seniors, why not apply again? We already lost so much, what do we got to lose? We have nothing to lose now. And so we did, we applied to the US again. And remember that university when I was a senior that I wanted to apply to? I replied to that one and then some other, other universities. Only one accepted me and that was the one university that I wanted to, Bryant University. So I came to the US on a whim of new hope, of new expectations. First time living in dorms, first time in cold weather, <laughs> that New England culture, which is amazing actually, thank you. Um, and it was the first time I actually saw snow in my life. Never seen snow. You got a load of that. <laughs> but I think that one of the biggest differences that I had in Bryant University versus my university back, back here is that everything here is very fast paced. You're expected to graduate in four years, get a job, pay your loans, and just fast, 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 fast. And you have to be com competitive above everyone else. Versus in Puerto Rico, everything's just laid back. I have so many friends that are gonna graduate in six years, seven years, take a gap year, change colleges. It's very laid back, very chill. Um, and so I needed something to stand out from everyone else. And so what I thought at the time was join a multi-level marketing company. If you guys know what that is, yes, I was one of those. <laughs> so one of the, the products that they sold were basically to learn and to learn on educational platforms and trading strategies on how to invest in the foreign exchange market and currencies market. For those that don't know what that is, it's basically taking, for example, two currencies, the Euro and the US, and if you exchange them back and forth uh, enough, you can actually earn a profit. 
I got enthralled by this market because it's open 24 hours a day and you need just your smartphone or, or internet device just to be able to trade and to invest. I was really excited about it and I wanted to make a career out of it. And I still do. But uh, I got out of that multi-level marketing company because I was just not getting the, product, the, the things that I wanted to, the results that I wanted to. But I still kept working on my craft. And I took the initiative to just get any online mentor I could, any classes, anything. And I was just losing so much money because I was paying these classes, but at the same time, I was just blowing accounts left and right because I just wanted to learn how this market worked. And I don't know why I have friends and my closest family members telling me, Carlos, quit. You're losing so much money. You're, what are you doing with yourself? You're literally losing everything, everything, all your money that you ever worked for. But I don't know why, I just kept working on it, kept working on the craft. I had what Napoleon Hill would call a burning desire. And I was willing to burn all bridges behind me to be able to get to that goal. And so summer, fast forward a bit to summer 2019, I got an internship in Puerto Rico, and then I started working with a friend of mine called Larry, and he's also a fellow frustrated trader. Um, and we took the initiative and asked, there's so many trading, strate trading strategies out there, but none of them really work for us. So here's a bold question. Why not create our own? Certainly a, a new idea, a, new, a really good question. And so we did. And that summer, we took the initiative to be able to test different variables, different scenarios, different indicators, and just test out whatever, whatever it was possible. So we kind of had our own little trading strategy, our own trading algorithm, and we put it out there. And then came September of 2019, where we actually started testing it, and I got a 10% return on investment. That's really good. And, I, and I've been two years trading, and the first time I actually saw some profit, I'm like, wait, I have something here. So at age 22, I'm able to say that I have my own algorithm in the biggest market in the world to trade on. Now, 23, birthday was just last week. My next initiative to be is learning how to code and how to trade algorithms, because many of the hedge funds and proprietary, proprietary firms, main thing is to be automated. So that's my next step. Now, I'm calm, I'm ready. I see myself by the end of this decade being an institutional investor, an institutional trader, to be able to invest and manage funds for other clientels and other big companies. See, the thing is that one of the biggest things that I would die for, and I will not stop working until I do, is to come back to Puerto Rico. I suffered so much, and I just want to give so much back to it. I want to, I want to get my own company. I want to create philanthropy, jobs, welfare. I have my vision. See, this is what Albert Einstein, Albert Einstein calls crises. Everyone in, the, in this group has crises in their lives, but progress can be made throughout those crises if one wants to. See, sometimes the, thi the things that you didn't want to happen needed to happen, but you just don't notice yet. I didn't th think, think of it that way. I remember when I was in the rut of my life, when I was just in, in, this, in, the, in these hurricanes, I used to victimize myself. I used to just like blame the circumstances that I was living, but I didn't let it stop me. I let it motivate me. So the thing is that humans are always blaming their circumstances, always blaming the, the situations that there are. Instead of blaming the circumstances, why not look at it differently? Why not use it to motivate you to be able to create the circumstances that you want to be in? See, for me, I found that to have success, you can't keep blaming the circumstances that you live in you need to know that circumstances do not exist unless you create them for yourselves. Thank you. <laughs>